Journeyman is a space that we've created for men to come and just depend on one another to know that you're not alone, that you're not the only one that faces the issues that you're facing and that there is a way to overcome it. It's a space where men can come together to make a collective impact, learn from each other, grow together and be accountable to each other. We aim to build, connect and empower men through practical living experiences and everyday life based off biblical principles. Whether it be a financial difficulty, whether it be problems in your marriage, maybe you feel that you're not a good enough father, you're not doing a good job, you're not alone. But a lot of men feel the same way you feel. You can come, be who you are, and be encouraged to know that somebody else has been through what you've been through, and they've been able to overcome it. And it's brought me closer to God. I could express myself. They're there for me. And when you think you're alone and you're falling, they're there to catch you. It holds me accountable to be a better man, to be a better father. It's helped me to grow a deeper relationship with Christ, to understand who He truly is. It's given me an accountability that I never had before. It's helped me to be a better husband. It's helped me to be a better father. It's helped me to lead by example. The Racine of the church is taking on this brand. Men connecting with other men, having coffee, building relationships, and that's what really what Journeyman is, and we believe that it is working. We're seeing Journeyman growing to new levels. We're seeing men being empowered. We're seeing young men growing up to be great Journeymen for their families. We think Journeyman is going to continue to grow for people like myself who never thought they would be at a place living purposefully in their life. All right, guys. Well, hey, welcome to Fight Night, man. I am super excited. I got, uh, man, we got some amazing things happening tonight uh, talking about vision, man. And, uh, man, my name is Jose, and I got RJ here, uh, and, um, and we're introduced to Man of the Hour here pretty soon. Uh, but, man, we got a, a, a guy all the way from uh, ATL, Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, man, it, it's uh, it's kind of late his time, but he said yes. Let's let's rock this party, and he's gonna start up, uh, stay up with us tonight in California. So man, I do appreciate appreciate you chiming in and and, and hanging out tonight, man. So tonight is fight night, guys. Uh, man, we're 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 continuing these Friday night sessions uh, surrounding uh, opportunities, equipping equipping men, giving them space. Uh, to really learn from each other, learn from different men, different paths, different walks of life. And uh, man, I'm super excited about tonight, man. What better time to really take a step back in your life and, 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 and dream and look at vision and look at ways to understand on how to write that vision uh, for the future, not, not only for your family, but maybe your ministry or maybe just uh, you know your professional life. All the things that men deal with, and uh, man, what what better time than now? Um, as as states are starting to open up, as as uh, you know, things are starting to kind of look a little bit clear, but very unclear. Uh, and uh, and and so, what better time to really talk about vision and leadership development? And uh, man, I couldn't think of a, of a better person than my new and best friend, uh, Jason Johnson, that we'll, we'll, we'll dive into him soon, man. But uh, RJ, man, why don't you jump in, man? Why don't you uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that we've been doing, how things have been happening, and uh, share a little bit about the vision, man. Yeah, good afternoon. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we're good. Good, good. Yeah, so, uh, you know, for those of you first-timers first joining us today, uh, Journeyman is a place that, um, you know, Jose came up with an idea, asked me to come alongside with him, and we talked about it, and uh, we wanted to create a, an environment, um, basically, to connect men, um, you know, on real issues, real things going on, so the purpose is to build, connect, and empower men through practical living experiences, everyday life, building intentional relationships with people, all based around biblical principles, of course, um, you know, that's our foundation. Uh, we want to make sure that, you know, men can come be men, we can come be um, and we always ask that transparency. Uh, God gets the glory in that transparency. So we ask that, you know, people transparent so other people can relate to them to know, hey, I've been through that situation or I'm going through this scenario. And if that guy came through it or went through it, maybe I can reach out and seek advice from him. Help, how did he get through it? What was his foundation? And what did he use to get um, over these issues? And then these times that we're in right now, um, you know, it's a good time, you know, set the price and help. 
reach out to somebody you trust. And, you know, and that's what it's all about, man. Intense relationship, quarterly five nights that close, and that involves, um, you know, main gathering. We've had, you know, 15 up to 40 men. Uh, we believe in um, breaking them down into smaller groups so it can be more, uh, you can connect on a smaller level and be more, more open things. But we have to, you know, obviously it's the internet, like I always say, so whatever's here isn't going to be confidential. But when we're in those spaces together, we uh, believe that everything that we speak of is confidential. We'll try to keep it there, um, you know, and just build those relationships, exchange numbers, hang out for walks. Uh, you know, sometimes they call me and say, hey, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to take a walk. And, um, you know, during this time, it's been a little different. So we can still connect, you know, checking on one another. How are you doing during this time? Anything you need, et cetera. So, you know, I'm thankful for Journeyman, what it's been um, in my life. And pray that tonight will be a blessing for other people, you know. Uh, you would, or like Jose said uh, earlier, you know, build, connect, and power. Um, he added activate about two two journeymen ago. There's a lot of people have been activating their gifts, man, and their calling and really finding their during this time. So, yeah. Man, thanks, RJ. I think uh, I think maybe your internet might be a little lagging, but we're good. So just uh, just keep that on uh, on your radar there. But man, I'm super excited it's about tonight, man. I do want to properly introduce. Uh, my friend, man, and uh, our friend, and uh, a friend of Journeyman, and now just a, a, another part of the piece uh, uh, for for our, uh, just even for the world in general, and just for men in general, man, and uh, Jason Johnson, I met Jason Johnson um, virtually, and that's pretty much it, and uh, the, the very first time we connected, uh, I, I seen him, and I seen what he's doing, started following him a little bit and just started asking questions and then I just said hey man I would love to you know hear more of your life and, and just start connecting and building some relationships and he definitely said yes to this and I'm super excited uh, about what he does so man Jason has a plethora of a background I'm just gonna start with just a little bit uh, man first off and foremost he's a father uh, and he can tell more than that on but a, he's also a man of God uh, in the marketplace and in and, and various areas uh, within the marketplace. Uh, but he has uh, been traveling across, across the country, uh, developing and training leaders and organizations from large multi-billion dollar financial institutions to small storefront churches. He's led and, very, uh, led and trained various pastors, churches, and spiritual organizations in numerous, new, in numerous growth, as well as uh, training organizations in, in developing vision and goal for the future. Um, you know, just a, a, a motivator, staff motivator, staff motivator, performance improvement person, uh, and somebody who really includes uh, training and development for diversity and inclusion. And so, uh, he leads a firm that is focused on future of the human capitalism and role in in, in the role and leadership um, that plays in creating long term improvement for organizations. Uh, man, Jason served in a pastoral leadership and advised. He has advised business executives for over a decade, spoken nationally all over the world, um, and as well as uh, been awarded a Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA, uh, and appeared on different radio, media, TV, broadcasts, so on and so on, man. Uh, he is an author. He's a book, uh, if you check him out, it's called Are You Dreaming or Are You Fantasizing? And The Courtroom, uh, The Trial of God versus Humanity. Uh, you can you can find those uh, uh, resources on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, um, books books a million, bam. Uh, but also a uh, f a former columnist uh, columnist of Clayton State's University student newspaper um, and uh, Tacoma News Tri Tri Tribune, uh, and has written man many articles. Man, his leadership is, philosophy is be the leaders that you want to you want others to become and. Uh, Man, he's a CEO and founder of the Johnson Consulting Firm. You can find him on social media at, at the JC Firm uh, on Instagram. He has a website at www.thejcfirm.com. Uh, you can email him at contact at the jcfirm.com, man. And I'm just super, we are just super humbled and blessed, man, that you said yes to Journeyman tonight, man, to really just kind of chime in your wisdom uh about you know vision and and getting men up to par to really start thinking about what's next what's the season in their life whether professionally whether in ministry um or, or whether whatever that looks like uh man so jason thank you 
thank you for saying yes to this, man. And uh, man, just why don't you just chime in and give us a little bit about your background, man, and a little bit about the inspiration about the type that you work that you do, man. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Thank you all so much for having me. Uh, you know, just listening to my own background, I'm just like, man, I'm thanking God. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that stuff, I, a lot of that stuff, I almost forgot, man. It's just, to, you know, just to really just hear right. the journey, uh, you know, kind of hear that reiterated. It's just, a, it's an amazing thing just to know what God has done and uh, what He's doing. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, like you said, you know, we've, um, my wife and I, we've been married ten years wow. next month, uh, so a whole decade. Nice. Uh, you know, like you mentioned, we have five children. Um, the ages range from 17, 7, 6, <laughs> 2, and, and 11 months. So, um, you know, and uh, we've been in leadership for well over 10 years now. Um, and uh, like you mentioned, you know, we've, we've had the privilege. God has allowed us to be able to go across the country, uh, working with churches, working with organizations, and just the doors that he's opened, you know, has just really been just amazing to us, um, you know, just to see uh, the things that he's allowed us to see and to do the things that he's allowed us to do. So I'm glad to be here, man. And uh, as you mentioned, my, my, you know, my passion is leadership, uh, you know, helping people develop, lead, uh, develop a vision, develop goals, uh, find out where they are, find out where they need to go, where they want to go, all those type of things. And so uh, I'm looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, man. Well, well, thank you once again, Jason, man, for, for saying yes, man. So I, I want to dive in a little bit real quick. Um, just uh, you, you just. I mean, you're you're married. You got kids. You got kids. You're homeschooling right now. You know, and uh, you know, wh where do you get your inspiration behind leadership development and and that type of stuff, man? What drives you? You know what? I would I would have to say it starts here at the house. It starts in the home, man. Uh, you know, just uh, with because, and I'll give you a little bit of the backstory. We planned for two children. Mm. Uh, but we have five. Wow. <laughs> so just to, just to see, uh, you know, God has added to our numbers, uh, you know, has been a, has been a whirlwind for us, to be honest, you know, just to be transparent about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've learned so much that we've learned so much from from our beautiful children. Uh, and uh, a lot of the things that I've learned uh, in leadership, I have learned right here in the house, man. I've yeah. learned with my wife. Mm. I've learned, through, you know, through the hardships. Uh, that you go through as a family, mm. uh, you know, we're not we're not immune to the struggles that many men uh, that may have children go through. Uh, and even personally, I, I'm not immune to the the struggles that m many men go through on a personal level. So, uh, you know, so the things that we've been through just within the household has really helped formulate uh, the leadership perspectives in a lot of ways that that uh, we have and the fact that we teach organizations and men all over the country. Man. Dude, so yeah, obviously I know that the, the home is a, is a huge piece, man, and that that is number one. I, I think a lot of men do it backwards, especially sometimes in the corporate world. You see that a lot more. I mean, the driver is people going to work in a long time, and that sometimes a, that builds a separation. And man, I, I just thank God that uh, there's been some opportunities of people just telling me that, giving me a warning, uh, you know, for me uh, about making sure that, you know, your home life is definitely... The, the, the number one leadership development uh, efforts that you right. put in, man. And so, so you have boys, girls. What, what does that look like, man? Yeah, we have three girls and two boys. Wow, man. So, yes, yeah, so we kind of, you know, we kind of like, uh, I don't know, we kind of leveled it out, you know, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. So, <laughs> and, 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 and that's it. <laughs> that's all she wrote, so. <laughs> I don't know, man. The Lord works in mysterious ways, you know. <laughs> Yeah, he does. He does. Sometimes he pulls her leg, so I'm like, "Oh man, no, I hear you." But uh, you know, when when we first got married, me and my wife, man, uh, we got married. Well, we 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 met when we were young, and uh, so from from the time that we were teenagers, you know, uh, and then we started courting and and uh, started really getting serious. And then when we got married, I said, "Hey, I want six kids." <laughs> And she like six kids. Wow. You she you crazy. You know. Yeah, right. And uh, and she was right because once we have one, I was like, all right, that's enough. <laughs> but uh, man, no. Let's uh, let's get into the conversation a little bit, man. So we're gonna talk a little bit about rethinking vision, man. And uh, guys, tonight, if you're watching online, if you just do us a favor, you can just hit the share button, invite your friends, invite your men. 
um, and uh, just keep hearing the share button, man, because this is going to be some good, some good nuggets. Uh, and uh, we're going to give Jason plenty of time to really kind of just dive into these different things and and you and 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 kind of give us some practical nuggets about vision and and shifting the mindset uh, of uh, even just thinking about what v- vision is, man. And so, Jason, what is it? What is the you know what is the the, the definition of vision? in your eyes and, and the things and in the work that you're doing, man. Yeah. So, so for me, um, you know, I define vision as what you want to continue doing to impact others. Mm. Mm. It's what you, you want to continue doing to impact others. And that's, that's kind of how I, I've, I've learned to define vision. And I didn't, I got that, I got that definition based off of a lot of experience with working with a lot of different leaders uh, and seeing how, Many different leaders uh, from many di- at many different levels really struggle with understanding a vision and understanding the importance of vision. Uh, and so I've seen I've seen many of them fall. I've seen many of them struggle uh, with their organizations or even struggle with their family. We struggle within their lives because they didn't have a vision. Uh, and so when I when I talk about a vision being something that you want to continue doing to impact others. That gives you a very broad and a very objective uh, uh, platform, I guess, if you could say. It gives you purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gives your life meaning. Uh, and so that's that's the way I've learned to define it. And that's that's distinct from goals. But we can we could talk about that, you know, when uh, you know, at another time, if you guys would like. Mm-hmm. But uh, it has to be distinguished from from goals, which is are, which are the things that you want to accomplish. Mm. So, man, and 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 so. In, continue to do do things to impact others, and that is, that is huge. And so, for Journey Men's mission, in a sense, is to connect, build, and empower men. Uh, and so, what, what we mean that empowering piece is the purposeful living of a man. And so, that can look like professionally, that can look like in ministry, that can look like just in the, in their home. And so, that that is important um, when you when you're establishing a vision, just. Let's say let's let's take that vision into just a, a home. How could you know what what a, what would be a definition in a home for vision, man? How does that continue to look like? Yeah, so that's a, that's a real good question. So when it comes to practically understanding vision, if you if you talk about what is your vision in your home, what do you want to continue to do to impact others? You have to ask yourself, what do you want to continue to do? Uh, to love your wife well. What do you want to continue to do to uh, to be more patient? You know, uh, as it relates to your children, because your patience is going to obviously impact your children. Um, you know, what do you want to do to uh, to help around the house? You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> if you want to, and let's just put it this way. I, I I'll, I'll say it this way. I want to. Uh, love my wife in a way that's glorifying to God. Mm. Uh, let's just say that that would be my a practical example of, of a vision for my house. I want to love my wife in a way that's glorifying to God. Mm. Now, everything that I do as it relates to the specifics, how I listen, uh, you know, how I communicate with her, mm. the time that I spend with her, the time that I invest in her, all those are specific goals that you want to accomplish that's going to help you live out that overarching vision mm. uh, of of loving your wife in a way that's glorified to God. Mm. So that's uh, maybe a practical example. Yeah, no, uh, within that, that, is, that is good, man. And I think uh, even just in the home life, right, you, you create your own little vision line, right? I mean, like for, right. for a business person and somebody who's in business, they're usually there's usually a tagline um, of some sort. That's mm. part of their vision. Um, where they're heading, right. and so I love the fact that you broke it down. Uh, and can you say that again? I want to love my wife and my family as God loved the church. Is that what you? Is that what you said? What was that? That yeah, that would that would definitely be that would definitely fit as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I was saying specifically was that you want to love your wife or you want to love your family in a way that's glorifying to God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so with that type of vision, that makes glorifying God the ultimate purpose. Mm-hmm of your life, the ultimate purpose of your existence. Uh, and that gives your life meaning, that gives your life, that gives you hope, mm-hmm. um, that gives your life purpose. And this meaning, this hope, this purpose, it won't change. It'll never, it, it, it will never move. It's, it's unchanging because it's to glorify God. Mm-hmm. And so 
you you kind of keep that at the the high level of everything you do. That's going to guard and guide everything that you do. And so you establish specific goals. Um, now that I know that I want to love my wife and my family in a way that's glorifying to God, I want to glorify God. So I want to, again, I want to listen well. I want to communicate. Um, you know, I want to get a job to be able to help provide for my family. Or, um, you know, when it comes to putting the children to bed at night, <laughs> you know, how, do I, how do I do that in a way mm, that's going to be come on. <laughs> so. <laughs> that is good, man. That that's one practical implementation of defining vision for a home, man. You know, and then yeah. uh, just let let's let's stay there for a little bit, and, and and let's let's see about a practical implementation or something of a vision of sort for a profession. Um, you know, let, let's look at yeah. a profession like a man's profession. What is some way that that we can de define vision there? Like, how do we create a vision for a profession? Yeah. So do you mean as, as far as a business owner or do you mean more just as far as your own professional life? Yeah, that's good. Let's, let's stick with the professional life probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when it comes to that, uh, again, if, if you, if you establish that, that overarching vision that you want to either live in a way, love your wife or love your family in a way that's glorifying to God. And you want to, let's just say, look at that in the professional side. Okay. I want to, excuse me. I want to live my life in a way that's going to be glorifying to God. All right. I got that. I got that established. Mm -hmm. Now what I want to do is professionally, I want to seek out a career. I want to seek out education. I want to seek out um, a job or whatever it may be. That's going to help me glorify God through my life. Mm -hmm. uh, and so how you choose that is going to, is going to, is going to take some time, but I believe that uh, ultimately, you're going to have to get to the foundation of, of where, where you are with God. Mm -hmm. So you have to establish a relationship with God in order to live in a way that's going to be glorifying to God. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and uh, and again, I don't want to sound churchy oh, good. Uh, or anything. You're good. Yeah, but, but to, in order to glorify God with that sort of vision, you're going to have to first establish that, that relationship with him. Mm -hmm. uh, and you got to establish that relationship with him by, you know, as you all probably, you all know, you know, giving your life to him, you know, uh, confessing your sins, you know, having that personal trust in him that he's your savior and, you know, that he's the savior of the world and all the things that he did uh, as it relates to the gospel. And so once you trust in the gospel and you have that real personal relationship with God, then that will allow you and even give you the Holy Spirit <laughs> who will lead and guide you in all these things. He will give you wisdom in all these things. And then he will help you get to that place where you figure out what your gifts are. Mm. What are your spiritual gifts? Like, what, do you, what is your passion? What is your, what is your wiring? How did God wire you? And when you figure those things, when you find out those things, those are going to be uh, very helpful for you to get to the place where you establish goals mm. to live out that vision. Mm. So man, so I, I think the, I think you're exactly right, man. Because even sometimes in the professional field, we're looking at, uh, you know, there might be some key, you know, uh, what do they call them? Uh, key, key. Oh man. So in a professional world, like in a corporate world, sometimes you have not goals, but you have. Uh, oh man, I don't even know the word, but yeah, there are goals. Quotas, huh? Quota. Quotas. Quota. Yeah, quota would be one, uh, or key. Um, Oh man, I key yeah, it's whatever. I I just don't remember. <laughs> but you have these these certain quotas that you make, or maybe you once you hit that quota, then you're expanded. And so, I think just thinking of the vision of even just that from that short lens, you're able to now establish all all the the, the things that you've been developing spiritually, uh, and, and that mm -hmm. connection that you have with God. Um, w once you establish that vertical, then a lot of horizontal, a lot of things start happening in your life. And so I like the, I like the fact right. that you pointed that out, man. So, yep. you know, both in, in the home as a man, both in a profession, uh, or let's, let's touch on the, on a business owner. Maybe somebody right now, uh, you know, obviously is shut down and, and there's, there's no, um, no income coming in and business owners are stuck, um, you know, how would you define vision in those those type of places in these runs right now, man? Yeah, yeah, that's a real good question. Uh, one thing I'll say is that the reason I define uh, leadership or, or vision, excuse me, vision in that way uh, is because it gives you that 
again, that foundation, or at least that it gives you that, that platform that doesn't change. And so if your vision, if you have a vision for, as a business owner or entrepreneur or, or what have you, um, your vision never changes. Mm. Vision doesn't end. Uh, and so what your vision has to be, your vision has to be clear, which makes it distinguishable from goals. Mm. Because again, goals are things that you want to accomplish and visions are the things that you live out mm. while you, as, as it relates to continuing to, uh, to impact others. Uh, and so when you're faced with a crisis, uh, like we're facing, we're facing now, uh, whether it be organizational crisis, whether it be financial crisis, whether it be uh, relational crisis, personal crisis, um, when you're faced with these crises, and we all have them, they all will come. Mm. Not they will come. Yeah. Those 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 will come. And so, if you have an established, well-established vision of knowing what you want to continue to do to impact others, then that vision will never change. Now, your goals on how you're going to live that vision out will change, but as it relates to your vision, that will never change. Right. So, so, so kind of digging more into the, the, the specifics of someone that may be in their home where they might have lost their business or they may be facing financial crisis right now. Your vision should not stop, but you have to be creative in establishing new goals to continue to live out that vision. And so one of the things that I tell uh, organizations or business leaders is we train them on how to write disruption into your model. Mm. You have to write disruption even into your, your goals, not into your vision because your vision won't be affected or shouldn't be affected by, by a crisis uh, or, or, or of any sort. But when it comes to your goals, your goals may be disrupted, but you got to write a, a model that has disruption written into that model. Mm. And, and, and that happens that that can we can talk more about that but that takes a team sitting down and and critically thinking and trying your best to conceptualize any possible uh catastrophe any possible disruption think about anything that could happen the worst case scenario the least worst case scenario i mean you have to go as far as you could possibly go to think about what could possibly happen that would disrupt your goals mm -hmm. and then when you uh, you write what your response would be into that. So when these things do come, it won't disrupt anything that you're doing. You would just have to re-navigate around those things and continue to live out that vision. Man, that's a sermon right there, man. So looking looking from the business model, right? I mean, man, just yeah. putting that into a spiritual context, uh, the disruption, you know, your foundation as a, as a believer and maybe those who are thinking about what, who is God? Why, you know, what is this as your foundation is settled on something that is right. vertical and, and, and the disruptions when it comes in, it's just like, Hey, or what do they say? They brush your shoulders off. You know, you brush your shoulders right. off. It's why, because you're not, you're, you know, you're not swayed and left. You know that the disruption is going to come in your life. And right now men are, yep. men are, we're struggling with that, right? I mean, everybody in the world, probably men in general, uh, is struggling with the disruption of this crisis. And uh, man, I love the fact that you said you put that the you know, disruption in, in your model. And so now, guys, men who are watching, man, so, so now we've kind of been through this, right? We're kind of going through it right now. So rethinking the vision for, for the future is to include somewhat of what, what my boy Jason Johnson just said, man, that disruption, building that disruption, the vision that's not going to change of where you're headed in life, but building that uh, disruption model in your personal well-being, man, it's going to it's gonna get you further. And, uh, man, I love the fact that you put that, man. RJ, you want to chime in a little bit on that? Yeah, no, I thought it, I thought it was good. I think um, I wonder what we can kind of hit on in the sense of, like, uh, Right, I think a lot of people's vision may be wrapped up inside a uh, inside their business, right? Inside their inside um, their their everyday life, right? Because like that's how we've been for the last you know ten years since two thousand eight, right? Now people are kind of feeling like they're almost reliving that time frame. Um, what are some What are some some tips that you can give on in the sense of goals on getting back to work from now until the time they go back to work? Because we don't know when that is. You know, what are some goals or some things that, you know, maybe people can plan for during this time to say, hey, 
maybe I need to set this up for now. Or like you said, looking forward two months, if, I, if, if you're going to go into work in two months and if you're not going to go into work in two months, what, what are you, what are your goals? And, you know, to stay sane, to stay healthy for your family, you yeah. know, things like that. So, yeah. ooh, you know, maybe we can hit on that. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's, that's, that's very good, man. So what I would say is, is uh, like I mentioned, when you, now that we're in a crisis, uh, and this crisis just, it came upon all of us. I mean, none of us expected this type of crisis. Uh, and especially none of us expected this crisis to have the ripple effect that it's had uh, on our entire economy, all the way down to our homes, all the way down to our children. Um, children are out of school. You know, um, we're getting laid off from work or we're missing work or, you know, all these type of things that's happening. So what I would say is, is that one of the things that you can do practically is uh, if we just say, for example, on the financial end, a lot of people and, uh, you know, Jose, you, you you know this probably better than I do. A lot of people don't plan financially for crisis. Right. Uh, and right. so now that we've we're going through this, now that we're kind of learning this the hard way, I believe it's very, very important that we now say, OK, moving forward, even with the even if, if say for example, if you get a stimulus check. You know, what what can I take out of this stimulus check? Can I save one hundred dollars? Can I save five dollars? Whatever it may be. I want to put some money aside uh, and I want to build that up because when I do that, I'm pres I'm positioning myself for the next possible crisis. And again, we don't know if that crisis is going to be uh, sickness. We don't know if that crisis is going to be an untimely death within our family. Uh, and so. Financially, that's that's something that I would say, you know, and again, that 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 seems very rudimentary, mm -hmm. you know, kind of elementary. Mm -hmm. Everybody say, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. you should save up. But do we really know that? Do we you know, if we if we really know that, why aren't we doing those things? And again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself, yes, uh, you, yes, know, uh, you know, we do some things, some practical things that we have to do. Um, for example, when it comes to spiritually, um, there are a lot of, I have, I, today has been a long day for me. I had a lot of conversations, phone calls with, uh, you know, different owners and CEOs. And one of the things that many of them are struggling with, is they're struggling with anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. Uh, and because again, they, they have, <clears throat> excuse me, they have wrapped their vision, um, into their own gain a lot of times, or, um, their vision has been so focused uh, on things that are arbitrary, you know, like getting a, you know, getting a certain amount of sales, you know, for this quarter or, you know, their, their, their vision has been based on we want to increase production for the next three quarters mm -hmm. and, and all those things. Now, when crisis hits, when business shuts down, when production shuts down, you know, what they were holding on to, what they were looking at is now being disrupted. Mm -hmm. uh, and that into their lives now they're they're at home more often you know now they happen to have more uh in-depth conversations with their wives mm -hmm. or they have more time now they got to become teachers uh and tutors <laughs> with their children <laughs> you know and so we again we didn't plan for all these but what i would say i would say to get to the to get to my point um as it relates to many people that's dealing with depression or anxiety or stress and worry about what's happening now um, I would encourage them to establish some uh, some disciplines. Let's say some spiritual disciplines. What are some new habits that you can begin to to put into play in your life? You need to build a routine, and as you build that routine, these are goals. Build the ha have a goal to build some routine in your life. Mm. Maybe by uh, you know maybe getting up in the morning and doing something different than you would normally do. Many of us we probably just get up look at our phone or get mm -hmm. up or check email, get up, check social media. What if you got up in the morning for the next two or three weeks, every morning you got up and said, you know what? I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go directly to scripture mm -hmm. and I'm going to open up scripture and I'm going to just pray. It can be one scripture. I'm just going to pray this one scripture and ask God to give me clarity about this one scripture, both as it relates to what it means and what it means to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think when you begin to establish those type of goals in your life, these or oh, that goal and those disciplines within that goal, then it will prepare you for those again those next level of crisis that's going to be coming. Man, that's good, man. That's real good. Uh, and, and so, man, we've been uh, talking a little bit tonight, guys. If you're just tuning in, 
do us a favor, hit share. Uh, it, you know, we are looking at comments, so if you got any comments or or questions, uh, go ahead and put them in the comments field. Uh, but man, we're talking about rethinking vision tonight, both you know from a spiritual content, from a professional lens, uh, for your from your home. And we got Jason Jason Johnson, man, leadership development uh, man, and uh, doing some amazing work through CEOs and, and different companies as well as churches. And so. If you're just barely tuning in, guys, just do us a favor, hit share, and continue to engage in the conversation. And so, vision defining that man is is really kind of in 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 the lens is it's not going to shift in crisis. You're not gonna you're not gonna shift your vision, but you are going to create some disruptions. Uh, you're gonna a new model in a sense, right? Both professionally, maybe spiritually, and uh, man, in the definition of vision of what we see is continue to do. Continuing to doing things to impact others, and so, uh, man, I love that definition, man. And so, man, as men, our hardest thing you talked about that is disciplines, and you, you talked a little bit about changing the habits and, and those type of deals. But when you when you get a vision, let's say God drops a vision of you, maybe, or maybe you know you're trying to create, you're you're an entrepreneur, and you're trying to create something. And uh, you want to, you know, you need vision, like you just, you need it, like where you're heading. Uh, and uh, right. so why is vision important, man? As a man in a business, professionally, why, why is it important? Yeah, it's, it's important because like, a, like I mentioned earlier, you know, it gives on a personal level, it gives your life purpose mm -hmm. uh, and it gives your life meaning. And I think that's what many men uh, struggle with, uh, you know, and I think this is behind a lot of many, a lot of men struggling with uh, personal struggles as far as like things like pornography, things like, you know, adultery, you know, things like impatience or, or what have you, um, you know, or even stress, anxiety and depression and these things mm. um, because they haven't established a vision that's clear enough, that's objective enough, enough and that's farsighted enough mm. to where you know, it, it, it becomes something that, how you say, it's something that propels you, mm -hmm. um, you know, it inspires you in a way to live at a higher level. It, 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 it's, it's so, it's so high mm. that it's, it, it, it challenges you to get there, oh. but at the same time, it's, a, it's, 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 it's doable, it's livable, you know, and so you have to get to that place where your vision has to be that. And so that's why I believe vision is important because again, like I said, it gives you purpose. Um, it's not shaky, it doesn't move, it doesn't change, and it gives it gives you meaning as well. Mm. As it relates on the business side, um, similar things, but you know, you know, we use different terminology when it comes to on the business side. If you're if you're a business owner and you don't have a vision then you're going to be unstable. Even you personally, you're going to be unstable in everything that you do. And when you haven't established a vision for your organization that you're leading, then I would argue that you're not leading that organization. Mm. There's by default, if you don't have a vision, there's you're going to be buying in and a puppet to the vision of everyone that's a part of your team or even outside of your organization. Mm. Uh, so this type of leader, uh, for example, this type of leader would be the leader that comes into uh, the boardroom meeting or comes into the conference meeting and he doesn't have any strategy. He doesn't speak up. Uh, he's only there to ask everyone else what they think mm. and ask everyone else what they think. What do you think we should do? What do you think we should do? Uh, he, he's just moved and he's just he's just tossed to and fro as scripture <laughs> talks about. <laughs> he's a double minded mm -hmm. man and everything that he does. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so. Uh, and so, and again, he's not leading that organization. The organization is being led by by his team or by uh, people, maybe even outside of his outside of his organization. So, if you're a business owner, you have to establish a establish a vision. And I'll, I'll say this real quick: there are a few reasons why um, business owners uh, or men don't establish a vision. Mm -hmm. um, it could be either they just don't know uh, the importance of a vision. Hence, I'm glad we're having this this conversation, or it could be, there's a lot of insecurity. Mm -hmm. um, insecurity is a, in, insecurity is a dangerous thing, man. It, it will, it will wreck you if it's, if it's, if it's gone unchecked. Mm -hmm. um, it could be insecurity about your character. That could be insecurity about your competence. Mm -hmm. um, that 
will be insecurity about your confidence. And so you're you're not you're not confident mm -hmm. as a man as a business leader. And just to just to say a few things about each about three of those, when it comes to character, maybe you aren't ha and or haven't established a vision because maybe you're doing some things in your life that that's not right. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're maybe you're being being um, dishonest about some things. Um, or maybe you still haven't gotten over some past hurts. Mm. Uh, you know, as it relates to maybe if in the business world you've been leading a team, and as you led that team, you know you had some unexpected people to mistreat you, or you had some betrayal. Um, you've had some people to try to you know overthrow your 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 title, take over your business, um, or steal your business, wh whatever it may be. Uh, and so you have some distrust within you, uh, and so those type of things can can alter your perspective they can alter your worldview mm. uh and so uh and so so that's because kind of on the character side so you have to make sure that you check your character check if there are some some wounds that haven't been healed mm. do you have some unforgiving resentment um in your life that you need to, to, to really deal with the second one was uh competence uh some people have a lot of men struggle with uh, insecurity as it relates to their competence. They don't feel like they know enough. Mm. They don't feel like they're smart mm. enough. You know, I didn't get my degree mm. at this specific university or, um, you know, I'm not as smart as Jose or I'm not as smart as, you know, these other guys. And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm really afraid to establish a vision or people may laugh at the vision that I really have mm. for this organization. I become a people pleaser, mm. you know, so I want to just everybody and, and, you know, and that doesn't work. And then number three, uh, when it comes to your confidence, um, again, the confidence and insecurity kind of go hand in hand, but they're not confident in themselves again because of their character, uh, some things that's unchecked there, or because they don't feel like they have the competence um, that they need to be the leader um, that they may see others uh, be, and and that confidence is only going to be built by you publicly and voluntarily um, exposing yourself to the judgment of others. Mm. So in talk a little bit more about that maybe at another time but you got to build confidence by um willfully voluntarily exposing yourself to the judgment of others and when you do that for a while that will really help out so man I'll, I'll, I'll no no you're good man so that that is perfect because last week man we had a another good friend of mine steve chaparro and he's he's also doing uh cultural design and and uh human-centered design methodology within businesses organizations nonprofits, and so forth um and he was talking about that. He said, uh, you know, to really kind of go after some people that you trust, right? And, and and maybe, you know, shoot them an email and ask them three questions and those three tough questions, right? And there's one of them that builds you up, one of them primarily the other two tear you down. And so you were talking about the, the mm. character piece because that is, that is huge. And for men in general... I believe, and and I'm 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 going down. I, well, I'm getting I'm going to be 40 years old, <laughs> and and so for me, I think uh, you know I kind of woke up late. I started late in my education. I I, um, I you know I went to the you know to work right out of high school. I made money. I didn't go straight to college and that type of path. I wish I did, um, but I ended up going into and I, I got blessed with the job in the corporate world. Uh, and I was there for 13 years, man. And so things, some things stuck. I grew, you know, and then I was getting to a place and I tried to get a, uh, a supervisor role, man. And I was told, you know, you got the experience, you know, you got this, you got that, but you don't have a degree. And, oh, man, that just stuck to my heart, right? And so my, comp my, my character, my competence, my confidence was just like threw out the wall. Mm -hmm. So I, I really struggled with that for a long time. So I'm glad you pointed that out because that one kind of just... Uh, that, that nudged at me a little bit because I know that pinched me a little bit because I, I know that was me. And I, I and by, by the time even now, I'm, I'm still learning about the importance of, of really kind of letting that vision, letting your character stay in these realms of discipline. And, uh, and not only with that, you're able to get, uh, you're able to get comp your, your confidence by, like you said, putting, putting yourself out there. And so this is this what we're doing tonight is is totally out there for us, <laughs> and so we've been this you know we've been established barely uh, going on three years, and uh, man we we we're just seeing the the power of engaging and connecting with men 
um, to, to get them to a place in their life, professionally, in the ministry, whatever there is, that they're walking in these three things, right? That their character is aligned, that, you know, their competency is built up by engaging with other men and sharpening each other, right? Proverbs twenty seven seventeen, you know, and, and that then kind of gets you like Superman, you know? And, uh, and the very mm-hmm. first broadcast that we talked about was, uh, you know, mental health and, uh, and the, the emotional aspects of a man how that, you know, how that competency and the character and all that things that you build up, build your testosterone. It does something to men. Mm. And so, man, I love the fact that you pointed that out, but it pinched me a little bit <laughs> and it still hurts. It still hurts to hear because it's, it's a good reminder. You know, it's a good, it's yeah. a good reminder. And if that's not in place, man, I love the scripture that you said, it didn't double mind, double yo, it's not going to last. And, uh, Man, so so looking at just a broadest perspective of men in general, and uh, Stacy Kramer says, "Hey, social distance." Stacy Kramer's uh, watching, man. Hey, good to see you, Stacy, man. Uh, that's a that's a great testimony that guy has uh, out of South Modesto, man. But thanks for tuning in, Stacy. Uh, we miss you, man. And uh, talking about vision in men in general, man. What do you see, you know, do you see men having that? And I'm going to be, I'm going to admit, I'm going to be the first one to say, it, it took me a long time to even think about that. Uh, and and, mm-hmm. and it, it reflected outwardly, right? My, my disciplines and my, you know, in my physical well-being, my emotional well-being, and even sometimes in my spiritual connection was all out of whack. And, uh, and it's not fully there yet, but I'm getting back. And so... For men in general, man, do you see that as a as a big issue of men having an established vision? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, and again, you know, some of those reasons um, was what I mentioned before was, you know, th- that character, you know, insecurities with character, competence and, uh, and and not having the confidence that they need. Um, you know, another thing I'll say is uh, the reason one of the reasons I see this this lack of vision with men is that men are mostly driven by results. Mm. They're, 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 they're driven by results. They're driven by, um, just to, you know, in the, the end product, mm. uh, you know, what can I get out of this? You know, you know what, and, and how can I move to the next thing? And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but when that's your, when, when the end result is your, your, your ultimate, um, I guess you could say you, you, you use that as a vision. Mm-hmm. That's your ultimate, uh, you know, approach. That's your, that was, that's what gives you purpose. When, when accomplishments, when achievements, when, when accolades, when results are what you're after, when that's what you pursue, um, you're always going to be, um, insecure in some way mm-hmm. because you're oriented. Uh, and so, uh, everything is all about how you can get the best result that you can get. And so scripture talks about how like death and destruction, the eyes are never satisfied. Uh, and we can talk about the eyes being things that we desire, things that we run after, you know, those type of things. But uh, same thing with men. If we're, if, if, if our, our vision is always focused on the result, we would never really have a fo- that foundation or that ultimate picture uh, of, of, of how to live that gives us the guidance of how to live and establish the goals that we need to establish mm-hmm. again to that ultimate vision. So the vision for men have to establish a vision. You have to establish a vision in your life. Again, that's clear, which means it's distinguishable from goals. Mm-hmm. That means that you live out, not accomplish. Right. You do not accomplish your vision. You live that vision out. Everything that you do is living out that vision. It never ends until you see God. Right. Um, so you, you live that vision out. And then those goals are going to have to be uh, positioned, incremental goals positioned to help you live out that vision. So your goals are like measurables. That's that's what I you know like to call them. They're measurables. They let you know where you are um, based upon where you've been. Mm. And that's that's important because it, sometimes we as men, we, we struggle with either insecurities or, or shame or things like that, fear, whatever it may be, um, because we, we inaccurately measure ourselves and we measure ourselves either against someone else, which is an incorrect measurement, or we measure ourselves based upon where we want to go. Mm-hmm. 
But you don't. You, we don't do that in real life. If you think about it, when you take a ruler, for example, your ruler doesn't measure what you're trying to measure with where the top of the ruler is. It measures the beginning of where the ruler is, and it, it or or it measures where you are, and it goes back to the where the ruler began. Mm -hmm. So, so I look at that in the same light as it relates to our lives. Is that I measure my growth by where I was. And where I am now, that's good. Where where I was and where I am now, not where I want to go, because again, where you want to go, that's that's potential, mm -hmm. and, and potential is just potential. Mm -hmm. You know, you that means you could be potentially anything, <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> yeah, <again>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so that's kind of how I look at you know that you know those are some things that I would say as it relates to to vision with men is that you know. Some maybe some of those insecurities of, of that keep us and hinder us from establishing a vision um, is that we we want to be more we're so goal oriented where we need to really be more vision oriented as it relates to having a big picture on what you want to continue to do and then you establish incremental goals that you want to accomplish and as you accomplish these goals you're going to get more motivated. You're going to get more excited. You're going to be more inspired, and all those things. Man, that's good, bro. Uh, for me, I'm on this. I'm on this health kickback, right? Uh, taking my my yep. spiritual, physical, everything back. And uh, like I said, I woke up late, man. So I love the fact that you pointed that out because I think that that right there, once you align your disciplines or, or your characters, and you start getting things back into place, right? It's like putting the puzzle back because mm -hmm. when you look at a puzzle. Like you said, uh, you look at a puzzle and, you, and the puzzle's just all over the place. But when you put the pieces back together and you accomplish little pieces here and there, it, it becomes one beautiful masterpiece, right? And so for me, right. uh, man, that is where I'm, where I'm now starting to celebrate where I was, not not where I'm going, not, not the end result. Um, because, man, that, that does kill you. It plays. It, it yep. does. It, it does something to your mental aspect. Uh, you feel like a failure, uh, and I'm gonna be transparent. Mm -hmm. You do feel that. I, I've experienced that. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, you know, when when I was a job of 13 years, I thought, oh man, this is my big break. You know, I have my first son, and I'm gonna get a su you know supervisor role. Man, that's awesome, right? And then boom, didn't happen. Right, I was slapped in the face, and uh, you know, with hey, uh, you know, you, you're great, you do good, but you just don't have that college degree, and so that really kind of mm -hmm. just obviously blew the where the the end the air out of me. This happened again in my life, man. Um, uh, you know, in, in a local company, I was you know moving, hustling, grinding, getting things done, and utilizing my skill sets from different aspects, and. Uh, Man, once again, oh, you know, we're going to get you a promotion. You're doing really good and blah, blah, blah. And then the door closed. And so that, that yeah. really started messing with me. Like, man, am I not worth it? I went to school, you know, all, the, all those things started developing in my life. But when I started to create some healthy habits now, just probably beginning this year, <laughs> I'm starting to see the results. Uh, you know, and the opportunities and clear and the vision I have. And I and I blurted this out to, you know, our home. We have a certain vision in our home for, for and I'm not going to say it, but we have a certain vision in our home to be settled within 10 years on certain things. And so, you mm. know, on the on the material aspect, you know, we have that, that, that part of vision. On the spiritual aspect, we, we also have a, a wholeness approach of, of, of being spiritually well with my kids and making sure they understand the word and understand godly characters and all those type of things and so man i love the fact that you pointed those things out man and so man guys if you're just tuning in man we're chiming in on vision rethinking it right now we're stuck in shelter in place and maybe some states are opening up but man what greater opportunity to kind of think about your life just your life as a man as a father as a husband as a pastor as a business owner as an entrepreneur, what better way right now than to really shift in mo your model or your opportunity to create an, a vision if you haven't done so uh, in your life than right now? And so we're talking that about with, with Jason Johnson. He's in Atlanta, Georgia. What time is it there right now, man? Is it 11 o'clock? 
<laughs> yeah, it's four minutes yeah. too. <laughs> My boy stayed up past eleven, man. He looks like he's only twenty years old, man. Look at him. That brother is solid, man. Uh, but now, man, don't, pre- don't take the hat off. Man. <laughs> I, pre- <laughs> I appreciate you staying up with us, man, and hanging with us in California. RJ, you have anything to chime in on that, man? Yeah, man. I was uh, I was definitely uh, kind of stuck on when you were talking about uh, that third one about people pleaser, man. I know that that's my weakness, man. I avoid confrontation. I hate confrontation, and I'm like. I'm the guy that'll like find the easiest way out of the situation. And uh, so like, um, like Jose said, you know, I'm in my business, um, you know, I'm, I'm a realtor, my wife's a loan officer. So I deal with people every day, different personality, different situations. There's been plenty of times that I said, you know, don't worry about it. I'll give up a piece of my commission to get this taken care of just because I don't want to deal with the conflict. I want to deal with the thing, but also um, like you say, vision. So like my, like our vision me and my wife together has always been to help people that didn't understand real estate, didn't know they can own a home, people who grew up, whose parents didn't own a home like myself, um, you know, and so when I got into the business, that's always been the people we focus on, you know, the people that are embarrassed to come forward with their credit, things like that, like, hey, we're here for you, we've been there, we know, we understand, so, you know, putting ourselves out there in that sense of being transparent, because we have been there, we understand, and we want to make sure it's there, Um, but of course, along the way, you know, the vision, you have goals in mind, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And it never works out that way, you know, and you, you get a lot of strife back and forth. And, uh, and so I know, like, that's, that's just kind of my overall thing, even in my home, I'll admit that, like, even dealing with conflicts with my wife, like, in the sense of situations, I'm like, I really don't want to talk about it. I really don't want to bring this up right now, just because that's, um, I just avoid conflict, you know? So it definitely is like, uh, one of the things that I need to work on for sure. And, um, you know, Jose always calls me out on it, you know, he always tells me I'm a chicken, <laughs> but, <laughs> Make some good chicken, man. you know, yeah. And he knows, he knows me better than anybody else, man. But you know, like that's just, that's just, you know, I guess part of my personality, but like you said, um, is there a, is there a point where you find that, were, were some people's vision, because obviously we need vision in every aspect of our life, right? We can't just have one vision. I mean, you can have one vision, I guess, in the sense of success, if you're looking at it that way in a business aspect, right? So you want your family to be able to, you know, have the nice things, have the house, whatever it may be, you know, for certain people. But um, is there a way where that vision beca- can become a selfish vision and it can have a negative effect on people? Because I know a lot of people say, I have this vision, but not realizing that that vision is stepping down on other people, losing maybe even your family, because I've seen people gain success, but lose things. Is there a balance where you find that vision is where you look at the vision and say, is my vision selfish? Mm. You know, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, when I, when I talked about having a vision, one thing I said was that a vision has to be clear, which is distinguishable from goals. And the second aspect of of a vision is that it's objective. And what I mean by objective is that it's not arbitrary or it's not based on selfish gain. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's it's outside of you. Uh, And uh, and I I would say this whenever I hear and this happens even like you mentioned, even in the business world uh, where many organizations that we work with, when we go in and, you know, and we assess where they are. um, One of the first thing I ask is, what, what is your vision? Where where do you have it written down or tell me your vision. I'll write down the vision. And their vision is so focused on the organization itself and their growth and their production and their bottom line. And when you have that, I don't consider that to be a vision. I consider that to be a fantasy. Mm. Wow. Good. Because if it's all about you and we know as men, we know what a fantasy yes, is. Sir. You know, there's a difference between a dream and there's a difference or dream or vision as, as a relate or there's a difference between a dream or vision and a fantasy a dream or vision again is about continuing to impact others a fantasy is all about you it's all about your gain it's all about what you can get out of it it's all about how you can be pleased it's all about how you can be satisfied um whether it's money whether it's sex whether whatever it may be um it's all about so yes, that, that there are times where people can establish what I would call a fantasy, um, but really they paint it over as if it is a vision, but it's, it, it wouldn't man, be a vision of mine. That, that's good, man. Yeah, that's, good. that's really good. That hits. That hits pretty hard because that that does, you know, because some men obviously, you know, 
your your upbringing kind of also kind of plays into that effect, right? I mean, because you know you have this fantasy when you're small that you want to buy a Lamborghini and you you know all these type of things. Maybe you didn't have that. You know, you grew up in poverty or whatever that stuff is, and so that drives you to get to that point. But there is a fine balance that, and, and I think for for people of of God in general, um, you know, sometimes you lead organization, you lead churches without that vision, and and I get spirit led. But then it's like, okay, is the vision, is it self-centered? Is it towards just, the, you know, the organization or, you know, the church building? Or yeah. is it to make yep. an impact? Yeah, I, I love right. that you said that, man, because that points out pretty big about a vision that makes an impact to others is creating disciples. All right? I mean, that's that's so, that's yep. the bottom line. Yep. And so what in, in yep. doing, in, in, in creating a vision... To create disciples is is the only way that God, through the gospel, has really driven you know the world. And uh, man, so just thinking of that, rethinking vision is the topic yeah. tonight, man. So I love I love the fact that you pointed that out, man. And so, give me some examples as we dive into dive into this conversation. You 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 know you mentioned it uh, about you know continuing to do your vision would be continuing to do something whether to to impact others. So. Giving, giving some examples um, of where this understanding of vision has helped maybe someone, a team, you know, what is that? What have you seen, man? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say, I'll, I'll use myself as an example, if, if I can, yeah. um, just to kind of give a little bit more of, of my, my story. Um, there was a time, uh, you know, in my life where, um, you know, I was passionate, uh, you know, I was I was driven, you know, I, I was ambitious, but I didn't have vision. Uh, and so what ha eventually happened to me is that, and, and this was just for me, and I'm not saying this is the case for everyone, but just for me, um, we end up fi ended up finding ourselves homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time where, you know, we lived in our car. Uh, and while during that time, and it was, a, it was for a few, I think about three months we lived in our car. Uh, and... During that time, you mean I, I really struggled. It was, I was in a dark place for a while because I really struggled with a lot of insecurity. Uh, I struggled with obviously, you know, you and your, your wife is in a car. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 homeless. You know, and so you know, you're, you're thinking like, man, does my wife? How does she see me? How does she look at me? Does she does she feel like I'm a man? I'm not providing all the type of things that that a lot of men think about. Uh, and so during that time, I struggled with insecurities. And, you know, and I had to ask God, God, OK, what what am I not doing? What am I missing? Mm. You know, I'm, I'm as far as I can tell, I'm being faithful in reading scripture. You know, I'm faithfully serving in church. You know, I'm faithful to my wife. You know, I'm like, you know what? Like, come on. You know, and we have yes, those conversations. Sir. You know, we have those cry yes, outs sir. to God at times. So, like, God, come, come on. on like, you know, like nothing is happening. No doors <laughs> open. Nobody a call back, you know, mm -hmm. uh. You know, I'm putting out all of these resumes and nobody's responding, you know, yeah. and I, you know, and it's like these credentials. I have these, I have these, these giftings and, you know, I, I, I got, I can play the drums. I can mm. sing. I can, I can do all these things. I can write, I can, you know, and I can, I know leadership, but, uh, you know, what God had to show me is, 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 is Jason, what do you want? Mm. Like, what do you, what do you want? Do you just want a big house mm. that, that that overlooks you know the city of Atlanta. Do you just want uh, you know a nice car? You know, do you just want uh, a lot of speaking engagements? Do you just want is that like what do you want? And and he took me to to James chapter four verse three, mm -hmm. and James chapter four verse three talks about how what you desire wars within you. Mm -hmm. Those things that you desire mm -hmm. within you, and you don't get what you want. Uh, so you fight or you quarrel with others, uh, and so so that really brought some 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 revelation to me and some in, gave me some insight to say, okay, Jason, what do you want? Do you want just these things? Because you can have these things, but you're going to want the next thing. So I had to say, okay, God, I need a vision for my life that will never change, that will never end, that is clear. That's objective. It's not based on me. And what God told me in Isaiah 43, I think it's Isaiah 43, maybe around verse seven, is that God created us all for his glory. Mm -hmm. That's 
That's all he gave mm -hmm. me. <laughs> and he does that. It's like, that's all he gave me. So, so what I got from that is like, okay, I have to establish my life. I have to I have to have a vision. And now my vision for my entire life, my entire existence is going to be to glorify mm -hmm. God. Because that's why I'm yes, created, sir. right? And then when I got that, I said, okay. And it's almost like just lights begin to come on. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. I don't, my vision is not to get these things because these things are temporary. We know according to scripture, they're temporary, they're transient. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're here, they're gone. I said, okay, now how do I get to live out this vision? How do I live this thing out? And so God started to show me, you need disciplines. Mm -hmm. You need disciplines in your life. You need to read scripture. I want to hear from you. And what he showed me is that, Jason, I've allowed you to get in this situation where you're in your car because I want your attention. Wow. Now, I'm not saying God does this for everybody, yeah. but this is this is how he had to get my attention. Is He said, I need your attention. I'm willing to allow you to go through this, this sort of situation, this, these sort of circumstances, because I want to hear yes, from sir. you. I love you that much that I'm going to allow this type of suffering because I want to hear from you. I want I want you to talk to me. I want you to listen to what I have for you and what I want to say to you. So, mm. so this is where, this is the biggest example for me. I can give you many examples with organizations, with individuals, where um, this understanding of vision that you, a vision being something you continue to do to impact others, um, that has been very, very impactful for, for, for their lives or for their organizations. But but most important, man, or most most potently it's been that impactful for my own man life. dude that 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 is awesome man that's kind of like an awakening right i mean that's those are those points where i think god puts us through different paths through a journey right and in, in our lives where we we're, we're grasping certain things and then it just collapse right it just closes the world closes right that's what's happening yeah. right now and uh man I, I think your story can relate with somebody at this moment and uh and just really he's like man i've been successful I've been, you know, uh, you know, maybe I have been traveling around the world and then I get a phone call and I lost everything. I lost yeah. everything. Yeah. And so pay attention yeah. to the voice that is calling to you right now and those people who are who are watching and maybe watching for this first time and and maybe somebody who's watching in in, in a mindset where they never think, "Oh, I'm just going to be to this level." You have to create some vision in your life uh, as a man, as a, as a leader, as a uh, you know, a son, a father, a husband, uh, you have to create vision in your life. You have to create margin to, to get to that vision. So that way, man, you're, you're able to, man, and I'm just going to be transparent and honest, man. I think for me, like the Lord has really kind of given me some of that. I'm not there yet, man. I'm going to be honest. I'm not there. Yet. He's given me some nuggets. He's given me an awakening. Um, but now I am able to, I'm able to bless others. You know, and and and, mm. and, 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 and in, in different ways. I mean, there's different ways. I, I feel like, you know, there, there might be some nuggets uh, in sharpening, you know, developing other men or, or uh, you know, even just sharing, uh, you know, my passion and my heart to get involved in the community and, and, and leading people that way or, you know, um, you know, doing discipleship differently or things as such where I'm able to now... You know what God has dropped in my life, and using utilizing the gifts and talents to 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 give to others, and that's always been my heart, man. So I, I'm gonna somehow figure that into my vision. Um, what you said, continuing to do the thing that you want to do, or that you've created, uh, both professionally and in your home, to impact others, man. And that 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 is scriptural. <laughs> that 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 sign yeah. right there is go out and make disciples, right? I mean that's yeah. that's really that's yeah. really the verse, man. And so. Man, we had a, it's a good conversation, man, and I, I you know, I, I want to get you off before one in the morning. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, the, my brother Jimmy's watching. Jimmy, he said, "Hey, hey, Jason, you give drum lessons, bro." <laughs> <laughs> my bro my, you know, I, I, I can, I can do a little something, man. I haven't played in, I haven't played in years, but. But uh, you know, maybe we can get together, man, and do a little yeah, shit. Yeah, man. My brother said so my brother's a drummer too, man. He uh and just funny enough, I I picked up drums when I was little and uh I played I remember this one time I was playing I got this opportunity in my local church and uh sidebar conversation, but I got this opportunity to, in my local church to play the drums and 
it was like the first big Sunday, right, that I was able to play the drums, and I was super young, dude. And so I was like, the, 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 I remember the bass player, he, he was like, hey, okay, let's go. You know, you're, you, I'm the only drummer, so let's go. And so I got on, and he's like looking at me, and he's like, give me the one, two, three, four, one, two. And so I'm just going at it, dude. And, and I started picking it up, and I got in the beat and going, and then I fall backwards. <laughs> I, I fell backwards man and during the service man but oh, cyber, man. so jimmy picked up that talent man he's an awesome drummer uh shout out to jimmy man he's a good drummer he's always in the pocket solid dude man so uh that, that's a good thing man so let's let's retweak and then let's get back into the conversation about rethinking vision man and uh you know, man, we, we, we highlighted, you know, the importance of de defining or creating a vision and why it's important, um, you know, as a man, as a professional, as a leader of your home, as a leader in your community, as a leader of your organization, your church, your business, or or maybe, uh, you know, your, your soon-to-come business, um, you know, why it's important. It's important that you're, you're able to now create uh, different characteristics, not only in your life, because as a man of God, maybe... You know, you're you're able to now create these characteristics of living your life and glorifying God in those aspects, and and and, and a lot of that has to build, you know, be with your physical aspect too. So once you get those disciplines in your life, you're now able to kind of just get a clearer picture of where you're heading in life in general, um, or in your business or in in your organization, man. Um, let, let's stay right there on, you know, maybe some more examples. What does it look like for some somebody in professional realm? Maybe a quick story or some sort that you've seen on how, you know, continuing to impact others in this vision concept has worked. Yeah, now you said organizationally? Yeah, maybe organization or even professionally. Yeah, yeah. so uh, so I was working with a, uh, with, a, with a, let's see, I got a couple of stories. Um, I'm thinking of one. I was working with, with an organization and... Um, this this specific organization had a lot of tension in their teams. Um, I mean, just to be be frank about it, they just weren't getting along. Um, so the management brought me in to be able to kind of help them do some conflict management type thing, uh, conflict resolutions. And uh, what I had to do with them again is uh, I, I do what I like to call the bridge. Um, I have I had the team to sit down. And instead of, you know, uh, everybody coming up and saying what I'm mad about, who I don't like, you know, uh, who I wish <laughs> was hired, uh, who shouldn't have gotten from, <laughs> you, you never accomplish anything sound, that way. Hey, you know, it's just going to. You, you sound like an evangelist. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Lead everybody to Christ. No, uh, I just. I put it down. And, um, and and what I did was is I, I had a big whiteboard I put in front of them, and um, what I did was I, I would draw this two sides of a bridge, and on on one one side one pillar I guess you could say um, this is where we are, right? So this is where we are, and we I, we can say I'm frustrated, I'm upset, I'm confused, I don't like this, I don't like that, but this is where we are, and then I asked them. To help me think, where do we want to be as it relates to just the relational aspect of this organization? Where do we want to be as far as the relationship with one another? And luckily, everybody, that every, everyone in that room was mature enough to say, well, I would like the relationships to have more communication. I would like everyone to, you know, to be a little more kind or whatever it is. OK, those that's that's kind of where we want to go. Um, and so I said, all right, so this is where we are. We're not communicating. We're not doing the things that we want to see happen. I said, so if we need to communicate better, this is going to be the first little brick, communication. And with it, with that brick, let's talk about how we can personally be a better communicator. And so what that does is, is that takes everyone's um, eyes off of each other and look at the problem instead of the mm. people. Uh, and that's one of the things that many, many teams struggle with is that, you know, when it comes to conflict resolution, um, you know, co or conflict management, everybody's always looking at each other instead of let's just look at the problem. And it, and it, and it takes some some maturity and it takes some time to be able to do that. But you have to take your eyes to the, and look at the problem. And I think this whiteboard or this bridge example really helps with that. So the team is together 
and they don't even realize it in the beginning, they're working together to talk about how they can work better mm. together. <laughs> so, mm. so it's it's and it's an amazing it's an amazing exercise. So they're like, yeah, we need to communicate better. I'm like, okay, how can we do that? Well, I need to be more patient. Great. Okay. You know, I need to, when I respond to somebody, I can respond in a kinder way or I can be a little more forgiving. And we just continue to get these blocks, block by block, and we build a bridge. So we now know what are the incremental goals that can help us get to the place where we have relationships that we're all happy with, if we could just use that as a vision and within our organization. Uh, so that's something that really helped this team. Uh, and, uh, you know, it didn't get the team to the point where everything was perfect. I mean, that's just not right. reality, but it got them to the place where they were all able to work together in a way where they continued to live out the vision of that organization. And it wasn't impeded by the continual conflicts that they were having. Man, previously. that that's good, man. I think, uh, I, I, I've, uh, been in some different, different training as well, um, surrounding human, human centered design mythology. And, uh, you know, looking mm. from the aspect of, uh, so let's look at, uh, let's look at a community issue, right? Um, let's look at, uh, the, 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 you know, let, let's, let's look at an issue that, um, that just happened and, uh, let's see, let's go to the end, you know, to the end user there and what, you know, what is the end user saying to, 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 and then you take back that and then you ask questions and then it started getting into diving in. Uh, to creating that that change together, right? Mm -hmm. And I like to use the I, I like the fact that you, you said about building bridges, man, because that's that's who journeyman is, man. I, I believe that, that that you know the spaces as men come together uh, to make a collective impact, you know, to 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 build upon each other, to connect with each other, uh, and to live out a purpose-filled life, man. And so you can't do that with without some of these things that we're talking about. Um, you really can't, as a man. You can't if, if you don't have a vision. Just even personally, you're gonna be lost. You're gonna just try to live that fantasy that is that is not gonna last. And and I think for me, man, I think uh, you know just to be transparent, you know, the older you get, somewhat the I guess the more wiser you get. I guess I don't know. I mean, you you look younger than me, dude, and uh, I'm pretty jealous about that, man. <laughs> but uh, you know, just to to to, to create that uh, that vision in your life, sometimes it's, it it takes a while. And so the encouragement I think today, you know, men who are watching, um, just from the amazing Jason Johnson, man, Double J, man, with just Jason Johnson dropping dropping the love all the way from ATL, man, and. Uh, just some of these nuggets, guys. I pray and I encourage you to, um, you know, jot these things down. These are these these aspects of creating vision, creating goals to get to that vision, uh, utilizing the importance of that vision. Your why, right? Your professional why, your your uh, your your husband why, your spiritual why, all these whys that are in your life that you start asking. You you start then creating a masterpiece. You created a masterpiece, the puzzle that we explained a little bit ago, man. And uh, I don't know, RJ, you got anything to chime in there, man, before we kind of wrap up the conversation? No, man. I know it's getting late over there, so I don't want to keep you up. I know you had a long day. So, <laughs> I know. I think uh, tonight was great, man. I definitely want to, uh, you know, hopefully we can maybe get a little a sample of something that we can practice as uh, as journeymen to, to build it up. Uh, in reaching the vision, you know, maybe Jason has something he can he can let us in on, you know, just to uh, to build it, to build it up, and then um, not only that, that we can probably utilize them for our personal lives as well, you know, uh, implementing it in our home and stuff like that. So, thanks for uh, everything, man, tonight. Thanks for your time and you know, dropping the knowledge on uh, many of us over here in California. Yeah, <laughs> man. No, we really appreciate. It. Beautiful. <laughs> Have you been to California, Jay? Oh yeah, I have. Actually, I was born in Sacramento, oh, California. That's right. That's right. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, you, yeah. you miss it. And we try. Well, I, I, so when I was born there, we we were um, uh, we were shipped to Columbus, Georgia. Uh, you know, we were in the foster system. It's a little bit more of my story, but um, so I didn't I didn't get to see it at that time. But um, when we traveled to Washington State, we were work we worked with some churches up there, um, and uh, we had an opportunity to go through 
California because at first we were just going to go uh, kind of like uh, northwest, kind of like go up this this direction, uh, you know, through the St. Louis and all the the, the, the <laughs> Dakotas. Like who right. there, man? Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's on. <laughs> We were, we were originally going to go through there, but uh, my wife decided that she wanted to go through California. So anyway, we we journeyed through there, but uh, California was beautiful, man. I mean, the weather, just everything about it that we saw was just beautiful. Uh, if there was a second place that we want we would want to live, it would definitely be California, yeah. man. Yeah, Cali love, man. Yeah. I mean, we got love for you out here, man. So if you ever come back this way, you got you got some two uh, two Hispanics into the Central Valley, man. You can reach out to and, and lean on. So. <laughs> Anytime, man. But uh, we really appreciate your time. And I, I do want to kind of wrap up the conversation, man, and talk about, you know, just just a little bit of, of nuggets about some, you know, maybe uh, surrounding just leadership in general. Um, you know, maybe let, let's talk to the man and uh, leadership as a man, um, you know, may, maybe just drop a little bit of nuggets on that, man. What, what are you seeing some of that place in, in men, man? Yeah. Um, one, one thing that I'll say about leadership with men um, is that you you have to be willing to make the necessary sacrifices to be a leader. Um, leadership is sacrificial. Vision is a sacrifice. Um, and if you if you really kind of just think about it for a second, um, when it comes to um, giving up something of value in the present, to gain something of value or greater value in the future. That's what I consider to be sacrifice is, is, is get something or, or losing some being willing to lose something or delay or deny something in the present that you value, that you may get something in greater value in the future. Uh, and so I consider leadership to be sacrificial. I see vision to be sacrificial because when you when you when you look at something, I'll just kind of use this as an example. When you look at something, we have been created with the limited ability to be able to focus on one mm -hmm. thing with high resolution. Um, you only can look at one thing with high resolution. Like for example, a lot of times people would say, "Look me in my mm -hmm. eyes," but really, you can't you can't look someone in their eyes. You only can look at them in their mm -hmm. eye. Uh, so and so, I, I I like to use that as an example. Uh, like maybe if someone is watching now, like here, here's here's a little example. Try to look at two things with high resolution. Like try to focus on two. They can be close together. I'm I'm looking at some words yeah. on the screen, and I look at one word, and every word that's next to it is low yeah, resolution. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I see that. So so it's the same. We were created that way, and I think. Uh, one of the reasons that God created us that way is that he wants us to have a vision that we're so focused on that we're willing to sacrifice all of the things on to our peripherals, all the things that are on the side to be able to get and continue to live out that vision of whatever it is that we're focused on. So when it comes to, to men, you, you have to have a vision. You have to be willing to sacrifice whatever it is that you were doing to get to the place to live out the things that you should be doing. Um, that's sacrificial. You're going to have to let it die. Um, like Paul talks about, you know, Paul would say, you know, he talks about how, um, you know, the, 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 the things that he gained in this world, he considered them to be dumb or he considered them to be, you know, uh, you know, futile. It, it's, 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 it's worthless compared to the glory of God compared to knowing God having a relationship with him. So, so I'll, I'll say that. So, yeah. So being a leader, you, you, you have to be willing to sacrifice the things that's necessary. And a lot of times to be the leader that God has, that has called us to be as men, uh, a lot of things you're going to have to sacrifice are going to be things within mm. you. It's going to, it's going to be things that you're pursuing uh, or want to pursue or things that you desire. You're going to have to get to the place where you're saying with looking at James four, three again, okay, what is warring within me? What are those things that I'm desiring that's just warring back and forth? And when I don't get them, I get upset. When it doesn't happen, I get angry and frustrated and I want to just give up on life. You got, you got to say, okay, I'm going to let these things go and I'm going to, I'm going to pursue something at a greater calling. I'm going to pursue a vision that, that's going to be continuing to impact mm -hmm. others, whether that's your family, whether that's your coworkers, whether that's 
uh, your clients, whether that's your customers, your community, whether that's your world or your church. You, you have to get to the place where you say, I'm going to be that type of leader. We we have enough leaders in the world or, or so-called leaders in the world that live Come for on. themselves. We have we have enough fantasizers, you know, type leaders that all they want is to get more money. All they want is to get a bigger mm -hmm. church, more people, uh, you know, more platforms, more speaking engagements. And they're not impacting on, anyone. Sir. I would be willing. I would be willing to be in a small room of people that make a great impact in the world than be in front of thousands of people who only want to just hear a good message and get mm. excited. That's, that's just me. That's, that's just me. But, um, so I would, that would be my encouragement. That would be my encouragement for, for men within the church, outside the church. If, if you're not a part of a church, um, if you're not even a believer, my encouragement for you is that if you want to be a leader, the greatest leader that has ever walked the face of the earth is yes, Jesus sir. Christ, the greatest leader. You can't find anybody. You won't find anybody has, that has ever led better than he has. He he led sacrificially. He led with love. He led with courage. He led with character, and he suffered while he led, and he suffered yes, for sir. you. So that would be my, that would be my encouragement, man. Just go ask God who He is. Ask Him to reveal Himself to you, and be open to to His leading. Be open to what he shows you. Uh, and if you do know him, you know, continue to ask him to help you establish that overarching vision, that 40,000 foot vision, and be willing to make the necessary sacrifices that it's going to take uh, for you to put off all of these old things and become that Come new on. person continually. Be the new person that he's calling you to be. So, Man. man. Jason man. Johnson, man. We, hey, we got we got we got number time, bro. It's almost almost one o'clock. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Jason, thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate you, man. I know this is uh this is a start to a new beginning or a new relationship with me and you and Journeyman and and RJ and myself and others that will connect you with. Um, but man, I I do uh, I thank you for your time, man. Thank you for your sacrifice tonight, man. Uh, mm -hmm. I really appreciate you. Staying up in the ATL, man, and uh, hanging with Kelly Love out here, man, and, and giving us some, some nuggets for the world, man, for the world. <laughs> um, so, man, thank you, Jason. Uh, so, once again, how do, we, how do they get in contact with you? Maybe, you know, they, they need some consulting surrounding, uh, you know, leadership development or, or organizational uh, uh, direction. Uh, how, how does somebody get in contact with you, man? Yeah, my email is, you can email us at contact at the jcfirm.com or you can go to our website at www.thejcfirm.com and you can find our information there you can go to contact us uh, and uh, you can reach out to us that way uh, we're looking forward to working with uh, you know teams organizations uh, we work at any level you know we don't we don't feel like we're at a place where we're too big to work with the storefront or too big to work with the with the, the new church plant that's in, that's still meeting in the living room. So, uh, you know, we love leadership. Uh, we love leaders. Uh, we believe that le it's leaders that makes a difference in the world. And so we're looking to, to continue to develop high capacity yes, leaders. Sir, man. And uh, I get a little bit of nuggets on that high capacity Facebook group, man. So I follow that. So I appreciate that, man. Uh, but Nat, thank you so much, Jason. Thanks for your time. RJ, you got any close out before we introduce for next week? No, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for, uh, you know, taking the time out of your, your night tonight. I know you said you had a busy day. Um, just want to let, uh, you know, all the men out there that are watching tonight, um, you know, I let you guys know this every time due to the situation that we're in. If you're struggling right now, you're going through anything, feel free to reach out. You know, we're here to pray for you guys. We're here to listen to you guys. And if we can't help you guys, we're going to connect you with the resources um, that you need to connect with, uh, you know. So whether it be for food, I know Jose and, uh, you know, and, you know, some of the connections he has in the community, he's able to, uh, you know, be able to connect you guys in the right places, mental health, et cetera. You know, just want to be able to help some men out. We know that the men, the leaders of their homes, and we got to stay strong during this time. Yeah, man, I appreciate it, RJ. Man, so, Jason, thank you again, bro, man. We really appreciate your, your, your heart. And, uh, man, just to pour into even just RJ and myself tonight, during tonight, man, I, I really appreciate you, man. And, and God, uh, su suppress your business and your consulting firm to do even greater is it, i you know i think just today Amen. is just the beginning of something in in, in california 
and uh, and that's what I see. So I, I think uh, you know as we stay connected, stronger, man. I know bigger things are going to happen because you're a journeyman as well, man. So we appreciate you, man. And uh, yeah. man, so next week, man. Hey, man. I need a shirt. I, got I need a you, shirt, man. man. We got you covered. I'm gonna you message me your address. <laughs> We're gonna so. We got these we got these long style shirts, man. But you probably look good in it because you're pretty solid. So, uh, you, you it'll look good on you. <laughs> so we got these long style shirts that we're 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 exiting now, and then we're gonna get into a new one. But these are uh, we got these polos from. I know we paid a pretty penny for these ones. So if you want one, man, we'll get you one, man. I got you. Hey, I yeah, appreciate sure, it, man. man. So next week, guys, if you're tuning in. Uh, next week we're gonna we're gonna have a, a local individual who's somebody who's been through uh, journeyman for a while, man. Uh, Angel Valdez has got an amazing story, uh, man. We you know the word that is coming to mind, the topic is distractions, and uh, just to hear his testimony and the life that he's journeyed through, uh, man, I believe somebody's gonna get impacted by that. And so, tune in next Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, here on Facebook Live. Uh, with Angel Valdez and uh, man, we're going to talk about distractions and how to maybe build that disruption model from into your next part of this season, man. So, Jason, thank you again. RJ, thank you guys. Uh, and then we're going to sign out. We'll see you next Friday at 7 p.m. If the doors open up, hey, we might meet locally, but I, I highly doubt it. But uh, we'll get there one day, man. So, uh, all right, Jason, thank you guys. Thank you, everybody. We'll see everybody next next Friday. Have a good night. Journeyman is a space that we've created for men to come and just depend on one another to know that you're not alone, that you're not the only one that faces the issues that you're facing and that there is a way to overcome it. It's a space where men can come together to make a collective impact, learn from each other, grow together and be accountable to each other. We aim to build, connect and empower men through practical living experiences and everyday life based off biblical principles. Whether it be a financial difficulty, whether it be problems in your marriage, maybe you feel that you're not a good enough father, you're not doing a good job, that you're not alone. But a lot of men feel the same way you feel. You can come, be who you are, and be encouraged to know that somebody else has been through what you've been through, and they've been able to overcome it. And it's brought me closer to God. I could express myself, they're there for me. And when you think you're alone and you're falling, they're there to catch you. It holds me accountable to be a better man, to be a better father. It's helped me to grow a deeper relationship with Christ, to understand who He truly is. It's given me an accountability that I never had before. It's helped me to be a better husband. It's helped me to be a better father. It's helped me to lead by example. That we're seeing other churches taking on this brand. Men connecting with other men, having coffee, building relationships. And that's what really what Journeyman is. And we believe that it is working. We're seeing journeymen growing to new levels. We're seeing men being empowered. We're seeing young men growing up to be great journeymen for their families. We think journeymen is going to continue to grow for people like myself who never thought they would be at a place living purposefully in their life.